thanks everyone for uh, for being here and uh, i can see more people are joining us uh, thank you amir for accepting the invitation and and being part of this uh, project um, this is the first conversation uh, of a series of conversations that will be opening in the coming uh, year or so. Uh, mostly each month we will be hosting a type designer or researcher uh, to open a lot of topics between highlighting the, the work they already do and uh, opening a lot of discussions around the, the type design discourse, uh, what is needed and what we see is a challenge that needs development. Um, so thank you, Amir, again for for being part of this. I don't want to take any time. I just want to be uh, leave the floor for you to uh, to go on with your, your work. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, um, hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Amir Mahdi Moslihi, a typeface designer and calligrapher from Iran. And uh, the name of my presentation my presentation is uh, Persian Arabic calligraphy: the ancient heritage. Thanks, Mohammed, for inviting me to this uh, interesting platform, type platform. And I'm going to start uh, my presentation with an introduction about my country, Iran, uh, our strategic posi uh, position in the southwestern of Asia, uh, Arabic script, and its branches. Uh, as you can see in the map, uh, Iran is a big country surrounded by eight countries uh, and uh, because of its different neighbors, our population includes many different ethnic groups. The majority of Iranian people is Persian with many different dialects and accents. Besides uh, Persian in Iran, Uh, besides uh, Persian in Iran, uh, Persian has three major dialects, Farsi, the Persian of Iran, Dari, the Persian of Afghanistan, and Tajik, a variant spoken Tajikistan in uh, the Central Asia. After the Muslim conquest of Persia in 7th century, our culture engaged with Arabic. Then we started using Arabic alphabet with some differences. All letters in Arabic and Persian almost same, except these four letters, uh, gaf, che, pe, and j. There's also another difference, uh, differences which are the isolated and final forms of kaf, k in Persian, and in writing figures, uh, four, five, and six uh, in Persian is uh, chahar, pan, shish, and in Arabic is arba, khamsa, wa setta. Uh, the last difference uh, between Persian and Arabic is uh, uh, Arabic writing system is ya. We do not put double dots on the bottom of ye. The Arabic script is written from right to left in a cursive style, in which most of letters are written in different forms according to whether they stand alone or are joined uh, to a following or preceding let letter. Because of this identical feature of Arabic scripts for writing on software programs like Adobe, uh, we need to use the version supporting Yud Amal Arabiya which means literally, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Arabic supports Arabic. The structure of uh, current, the maybe I need to put it here. And the structure of um, Current Arabic script is much simpler than Arabic uh, Persian calligraphic styles. However, the Arabic script might look complex for those who are not native uh, to this script, especially Latin readers. Especially for Latin readers. Sorry.
let's get back to Iran. Iran is a famous um, country for architecture, literature, music, mountains, deserts, and it's uh, um, a special nature and the calligraphy. The thing that I will take more, uh, I will talk more about. In Islamic period of Iran from uh, 1,100 years ago until now, the Persian calligraphy has played an important role in our culture. We use calligraphy for decorating architectural buildings, writing the literature texts or verses, creating new styles in fine arts and etc. We are engaged with calligraphy. From all different calligraphy style, uh, which are common in Iran and other Islamic countries, four of them were originally invented in Iran. Ta'aliq, Nasta'aliq, Shekasta Ta'aliq, and Shekasta Nasta'aliq. I will refer more to these uh, four scripts in this presentation. Let's start with Nasta'aliq, which is the most popular script in Iran. Nastaliq is the result of mixing two different scripts, Nastaliq plus Nasr plus, uh, plus Ta'aliq. Nastaliq was invented in 15th century and has uh, four main schools, Taymur, Turco-Mongol Empire founded by Taymur, ruling um, all Persian territories for more than 100 years, Safaviye, the first native dynasty of Iran after Muslim conquest, Qajar, the dynasty of Iran after Safaviye. In this uh, period of time, the process of Iran's modernization was begun. And the last um, style of uh, writing Nastaliq is the contemporary style of uh, Nastaliq. The most common place for attending uh, training courses of Persian calligraphy, especially in Astalir in Iran, is Iran Calligraphers Association, ICA. Hundreds of calligraphers in Iran uh, graduated from this association. The instructions of uh, the instructors of ICA is usually teaching Nastalir in the contemporary style. When I interned to this association, I had no choice but to start practicing Nastaliq in contemporary style. But after some years, I found Mirza Ghulam Reza Espahani and fell in love with his specific style of Nastaliq and also his specific style of Shekhasta Nastaliq and his interesting personality. Mirza is one of the most celebrated Persian calligraphers for the 19th century of Iran. I have always been impressed by looking at his famous autograph, uh, which is Ya Ali Madadast, which means uh, mentioning the name of Ali. Ali is the first Imam of Shia, is helpful. After a while, I decided to collect all his beautiful combination of uh, words and letters in a calligraphy words, like um, you can see in a uh, photo. Here you can see my calligraphy in uh, Mirza's calligraphy style. In that time, uh, I started to work as a graphic designer with a calligraphic background. I remember that how much I got upset when I worked with uh, the Nastali fonts um, in that time, like this. I couldn't be satisfied with their letter forms and poor drawing. This typeface is the... Uh, so I decided to design a Nastali typeface based on the hand of Mirza Ghulam Reza Isfahani. This typeface is the result of an extensive study uh, on the best specimens of Mirza Ghulam Reza's work during the last decade of his, last, his, his life. I traced the letters of all his um, available specimens in a specific style like these samples. 
Then I try to harmonize letters in size, contrasts, and, distrib and distribution of thicknesses, and also the aesthetics. For drawing letters in exact form of letters in Mirza's specimen, uh, I studied his well-crafted works to know the logic behind uh, of letter forms. It was really complicated uh, work because in Nastali for each letter, we have around 40 variants. I finally did it. I designed uh, more than 1,400 characters during one year, plus six years of investigation on Mirza Ghulam Zesfani Nastali's style. My dream uh, was sharing the beauties of Mirza Ghulam Zas Nastali's style. I don't know how much I succeeded to fulfill this dream, but now I am satisfied with the result. Nastalik has many different features like elongation, alternative forms, cursive behaviors. Beside, uh, in font engineering that Mariam Soft uh, company was responsible for, uh, we needed to follow the logic of calligraphy such as dots positioning, Nastalik kerning, how to implement alternative forms, and etc. One of the most important uh, things uh, of designing Mirza was drawing letters. I tried to draw uh, them and repeat the details in all letters. Moreover, I wanted to represent the sense of calligraphy. You can see that how much the letters uh, embrace each other and can complete each other like a puzzle. Now, when I, uh, when I compare Mirza to other Nastali fonts like this, I feel uh, the smile on my face. Mirza also won uh, the second. Um, Mirza also won the second prize in the Grandshan competition in 2017, and was also the winner of TDC uh, Typeface Design Competition in 2018. Let's get back to the map of Iran. In, in the southwestern of Iran, we have a province named Khuzestan, uh, means the land of sugar. I am originally from Khuzestan. This province includes Persian and Arabic people. The concept of mixing Arabic and Persian culture caused designing my second typeface. I imagined three icons, uh, icons from Khuzestan, the architecture of Ziggurat, Chogazambil, the ancient Elamite complex in the Khuzestan, a specific architecture of tomb, which is like a uh, sugar loaf, and uh, the palm tree. But I should mention uh, the main motif. In that time, I was working in a graphic design studio and we were commissioned to design the visual identity of Telesk records and also to design one of uh, their album covers. After an in initial discussion, we agreed to design a typeface family for titles of uh, their music albums. When I was listening to the track uh, Qanun, Qanun is the name of an instrument in um, Arabic music and represent the Arabic uh, music flavor, flavor. In this album, Taqai Zarbiya Baghdad, the first um, music album of Telesk, I was uh, reminded of hot sunlight, uh, sunlight of Khuzestan. Telesk typeface, uh, was shaped in the spirit of the Rok'e calligraphic style. Rok'e is a versatile style uh, that can be used in running text, uh, either Arabic or Persian. When I look at uh, Telesk letter forms, I can imagine Khuzestan's icons. 
I also wrote a literary statement for Telesk. Uh, I'm not expert in translating from uh, Persian to English, but uh, I did my best for translating this statement. Uh, the statement is, uh, this typeface is not going to be Persian or, or Arabic, but by which can write Abadan's berhi, is, is a, a special fruit of Palm Khuzestan, is selling, or Casablanca is closed, a typeface that belongs to the land uh, between two rivers, uh, is the name of an ancient land in Iraq and Iran, and smells grape wine. It name, uh, the name is uh, Telesk. Telesk, which means grapes in Persian, uh, is a modern typeface family in eight weights. The thin, light, regular, and medium weights were designed for body takes, and the semi-bold, bold, extra bold, and black weights for headlines and uh, in display uses. Here uh, you can see some uh, music albums of Teles records on which Teles were used. Teles supports Arabic, Persian, and Urdu and was released by Mariam Soft Company. Again, Persian calligraphy. Shikasta Nastaliq uh, script originated from Nastaliq script in the early of uh, 17th century in Iran. Shikasta literally means broken in Persian. And as a Persian calligraphic style, it refers to the specific style of writing in which words are written in a more cursive and informal manner than the original form. Because of these characteristics, based on two remarkable examples of hands in uh, Shekast style, Shekast Ta'liq and Shekast Nastaliq, the geometry of letters uh, becomes more sophisticated than the script uh, that uh, Shekaste is derived from. Besides, Shekaste Nastaliq shares some similarities with Taliq, especially with regards to the application. In the royal court of Iran, In the royal court of Iran, the official secretaries who were experts in literature and calligraphy were called Dabir. They were usually ranked by using titles such as Dabir Khagan or Dabir al Mamalik and were assigned to write the royal decrees. The design of present typeface was initiated in January 2019 with the intention to develop a powerful tool uh, for typesetting literary uh, and educational texts and other applications. Considering these factors, this typeface was uh, appropriately called Dabir. After two years, I uh, redesigned Dabir and added two other weights, namely Mashq and Jadu. The design of two other weights started with designing the thicker weight called mashq. Mashq literally means a practice. And a mashq is the name of a calligraphy pen uh, in Persian calligraphy, in which nib width is around five to six millimeters, appropriate for writing titles or short sentences. In mashq weight, I attempt to represent the feeling of the proportion of letters in mashq pen. After designing this weight, I generated the intermediate weight, namely jadu, uh, between two other weights. Jadu literally means uh, magic, is also the name of a calligraphic, uh, a calligraphy pen in which the width of nib is around three to four millimeters. Dabir is a calligraphic uh, type family and is uh, appropriate for uh, calligraphic uh, compositions, headlines, and even longer texts. It supports Persian, Arabic, and Urdu, and is a powerful tool for designers and calligraphy enthusiasts.
My last experience of using Persian calligraphy in typeface design is Ikhtiyar. Taliq script is a cursive uh, Persian calligraphy style, which was gradually developed from the 13th century in Iran. This style was uh, widely used, particularly within the Persian speaking lands. However, with the spread of a new Persian style called Nastaliq around the 14th century, Taliq lost its popularity and slowly fell out of use. I have always been fascinated by the dynamic and richness of uh, this style and wanted to design a digital typeface which could capture those characteristics. I designed this typeface uh, based on the calligraphic model of Khaji Ikhtiyar, one of the most celebrated Tali calligraphers. And as a tribute to this master calligrapher, I called it Ikhtiyar. This typeface is also the result of an, in, an extensive investigation in the best calligraphic specimens of Khaji Ikhtiyar. My aim was to remain uh, faithful to the original letter forms and at the same time, I develop uh, a typeface that is suitable for modern use. Divani script, which is popular in uh, Arabic writing culture, was originated from Ta'liq. Unexpectedly, after designing Ikhtiyar, I felt somehow the sense of Divani in the uh, sentences written by Ikhtiyar. I think Ikhtiyar could also make uh, a good result for Arabic texture like this sample. Here you can see my atoms to simplify uh, Taliq letters. Ikhtiyar is a calligraphic display typeface uh, and it's uh, appropriate for writing headlines or short literary lines. It supports Arabic, Persian, and Urdu. I would like to have a conclusion of uh, my uh, experiences uh, in typeface design. Uh, after these experiences of using calligraphy in uh, designing uh, calligraphic typefaces or uh, modern typeface, uh, I could include, uh, I could uh, conclude the idea of referring constantly to Arabic Persian calligraphy sources in these three items. By referring to Arabic Persian calligraphy, it makes to have a strong relationship with our culture. Its diversity and the experimental models of Arabic Persian calligraphy can raise our creativity and help us to find the new solutions. It's a, a visual timeline for letters evolution by which we could understand the logic of shaping letters. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Amir, for this very rich uh, presentation. Okay. Like, I, <laughs> I would have loved to watch for another hour, maybe, or something. Okay. I wouldn't I wouldn't get bored at all. And uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely have some questions. And I don't know about the attendees. Uh, if you guys have questions, you can feel free to either write it down in the chat or unmute yourself and, and share your question with everyone. Um, and till someone has a question, I would like to, to share some. Um, uh, I don't I don't even know where to start from. Um, but specifically, like I, I can tell that you are very keen on on, on building this, um, on originating on the manuscripts and on the culture and, 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 and historical part of the script itself to give you this inspiration for any modernity or for any move towards a contemporary design. 
and not not only that this is not a very simple thing to do but like it also can can push you across some difficulties or limitations of the technology itself and this is something i really wanted to ask about you said in in, in mirza you have you have like 40 variations for each letter yes that's a lot <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah so this I, I would like to hear a, a little bit about this this technological limitation like how do like you, you started your presentation by situating by, by talking about your positions geographically politically and and all that so yeah. if you are going to situate arabic script now right now within all these givings that we have like how are we going to be dealing with this kind of technological limitation uh, I'm not really expert in uh, font engineering because uh, in all of my typefaces, Mariam Saf was uh, in this uh, position. But uh, I think, uh, uh, as I said, I'm not expert in this. <laughs> Honestly, uh, that's even it's even better. Like we have with us here, Khaled Hosni is an expert on engineering, and okay. and he would maybe have the solutions in hand, but. I'm on the other end on, on a similar boat where, where engineering is not really my tool. Yes. yes. So when I come across such a limitation, I'm, I'm either faced with either f f trying to find the help somewhere, or if I can't afford it, the project can't afford it, then I'll be talking about limitation, about needing to compromise. Yes. Is this something you should you think one should consider or? Even in the creative uh, process itself. Oh, in a, uh, I consider uh, the uh, limitation of font engineering during the design of Mirza. Uh, for example, I uh, simplify some uh, groups of letter in Mirza, and uh, uh, at the first time, I guess it was more than two thousand letters, and I uh, try to minimize it to. Uh, less than 1,400 uh, characters. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, the uh, strategy of Mariam Saf is completely different from uh, uh, other um, font engineers because uh, they um, invented, uh, I don't know, they uh, designed a specific uh, software for uh, using their fonts. Uh, and uh, I think it's a kind of uh, open type uh, font engineering, but I'm not sure about the details. Uh, but uh, they noticed me uh, during designing Mirza, they, do they noticed me, uh, you can uh, um, simplify uh, these uh, two groups to a, a first group or something like this. Uh, and uh, I um, should, uh, solve these problems uh, and uh, find uh, some similarities with, uh, between letters. For example, uh, the letters that join to fe in Arabic or letters join uh, to um, ein uh, is uh, a little uh, similar behavior. So uh, I try to find, uh, um, I don't know, close behavior between letters like this. Uh, these are my uh, strategy during um, uh, designing Mirza. That's that's interesting because like, yeah, I think like after all you, you start to figure out a way, but I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit like in, in the last period, I'm trying to think a lot about how these limitations are affecting uh, designers who work on scripts that are titled as non-Latin mm -hmm. and how the technology itself and how the tools we have in hand are not necessarily uh, offered with uh, elasticity enough to serve the other scripts equally. So th this is why this 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 wonder or this question is, is coming uh, like always to me. Like, like in your yes. case, you started making this like matching process to find relationships to find a solution for it i see maybe uh, some experts like uh, khaled or sarafshar or uh, the 
uh, Thomas Milo uh, would be a, a good uh, uh, designer or for a font engineer for uh, answering this question. Uh, uh, honestly, I cannot uh, answer your uh, questions about uh, font engineering of yeah. Mirza, but. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I was still interested in, in how you handle it as a designer also. And if if no one else has questions, I'll keep going. So if you guys have a question or something, write it in the chat. Um, another thing that, that I noticed in the work you shared is that I can definitely see an intensive work on research. Yes. Um, and I'm not fully aware, like for my ignorance, about how accessible it is in Iran to, mm -hmm. to get accessibility to these manuscripts, to like, how would you tell me about the situation of, of this research? How accessible was it? Uh, actually, I'm a collector. <laughs> ah, so, <nice. laughs> uh, uh, I have this desire to collecting manuscript. Uh, so for designing Mirza, I, um, first of all, I went to uh, museums that uh, Mirza's works uh, were collected, and I asked, uh, I, I asked them to um, share the scan, uh, the high quality scan uh, photos of um, Mirza, and I collected uh, them together, and uh, it was uh, easy in that time for me. Uh, because um, I have a, um, a strong relationship with calligraphers because I um, did calligraphy in that time for 10 years. Uh, and uh, so it was easy for me, but I'm not sure about uh, designers uh, because uh, they need to uh, convince uh, collectors or uh, museums uh, for uh, giving their... Um, models but uh, designing uh, during designing Mirza uh, I asked more than uh, 10 collectors and I used uh, uh, the collection of a Mirza from two famous Iranian museum nice uh, we have a question from uh, Abdu he's asking uh, you mentioned how you think in the masters as open uh, as bent thickness. Can you explain that point more? Uh, the mention how you think. Uh, you mean the uh, distribution of thickness or I uh, proportion? Think, yeah, some... according to what my understanding, this is what what they mean, I guess. Uh, for Trump example, in, can clarify. for example, in Mirza, I tried to uh, represent the sense of uh, calligraphy need in uh, each letter. Uh, it is the, uh, I guess, maybe it would be the answer of this question. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Abdul, uh, if we couldn't understand it well, if the, or this answer was not fully what you were looking for, like you can elaborate on it more. And we have another amazing question, yeah, from, from Sina. Uh, Amir, do you know if Mirza can be used without the Miriam soft, uh, software? And uh, as an OTF format, can the complicated compositions and the spaces of version of Stalik be achieved just by typing? Uh, there's that's, that's an, a there's some question. attempts uh, to designing uh, uh, the Nastaliq uh, style uh, for Urdu speakers. Uh, I know uh, they are trying to uh, release uh, the OTF version for Nastaliq, and uh, I'm aware of uh, some parts of this project. And uh, I think in the, in the near future, we can uh, see uh, OTF Nastaliq, uh, not like Mirza, because Mirza is um, uh, really complicated because of uh, the characters and um, the uh, this, uh, during process of Mirza, I uh, have to be faithful for uh, with uh, Mirza's letter forms. But uh, for designing the general Nastaliq, you do not have to 
uh, obey this uh, strategy. So maybe in near in near future we can see uh, OTF uh, version of Nastali, but uh, much more simpler than. But uh, but again, I will I will like insist on the same question. If you like, can you imagine a, a version of Mirza that that works with OTF and you would be satisfied with it? You think yes. this? You think OTF can pull this? Yes, I am working on a uh, on a typeface uh, which is uh, OTF, and uh, it is also a modern Nastali. And uh, yes, uh, we can. So it's a version also like simplified version yes, of it. Yes. Not, exactly. but yeah, but that's that's exactly the like because also Sina is saying yeah, there is no to, and it's uh, a simplified version of Nastali, and it's working with OTF, but. I'm, I'm I'm curious about this level of complexity. Yes. <laughs> if 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 really just OTF can just offer it in any form, without uh, the need to oversimplify it, without the need to do all the comp the compromising from your side. I don't know. Maybe Khaled or <laughs> engineers can answer this question. Yes, it's out of my area of expertise. Yeah, if, if someone else has a question, please write it down. And I, I, I will get a little bit back to um, in the inter, like in the beginning of the presentation and you were talking about um, the relationship uh, between the common viewer or the common user uh, or uh, user of, of the fonts uh, in Iran. And because like the presence of calligraphy in, in architecture and- yes. And, and this like relationship between the common um, citizen and, 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 and calligraphy, which is something I would say coming from Cairo, I would say it's also uh, like, I, I would see the same, I would say the same in Cairo, like there, there's a, a presence of calligraphy in mosques, especially the old Cairo part. And this relationship is, is, is definitely present in, in some of the Arab Islamic uh, cities, but, like I guess Syria or uh, Lebanon. Syria, would, yeah, Syria would be the same. Uh, Lebanon to a certain extent. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I think it would be a common a common theme in many of the the the, the Islamic cities or the like the Islamic part of these cities. Mm -hmm. But again, as a as a general outsider looking at the, the scene in Iran and, and the, specifically the type design scene and the calligraphy scene. There is a little bit of um, a different taste to the way type designers from Iran are handling the the, the step towards modernity. Like mm -hmm. there is there is a very specific taste to this. There is, it's like there is a very common sense of taking the manuscript as the source. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and and so I'm, I'm I've always wondered. What really caused this, besides being very familiar with calligraphy, because that, that is common, as we said, yes. because we don't really have um, a discourse that we can put our hands on and rely to when it comes to Arabic type design. But at the same time, there is this common sense in, in the Iranian scene. If you can tell us a little bit more about it. Yes, let's start uh, answering to this question with um, telling a history of a uh, new movement of uh, fine arts in Iran uh, that uh, goes back to, I guess, 15 years ago. Uh, after um, uh, the last kingdom, uh, the last king of Iran uh, before the revolution, the Islamic revolution of Iran, um, uh, try to uh, improve the modern culture in Iran. Uh, one night uh, for uh, less than uh, 48 hours, the price of uh, oil uh, increased uh, to, I guess, more than four times. So, uh, um, <laughs> the modern museum of art uh, established in Iran and many other uh, modern uh, institutes uh, were established uh, by the uh, 
uh, wife of uh, the last king of Iran, uh, Farah, and uh, they uh, uh, and they encouraged people to uh, do modern art or something like this. Uh, the new movement of uh, modern art in Iran uh, was invented in the middle of, uh, uh, I guess, 65, around, six, uh, around nine, uh, 1965, I guess. Uh, then uh, some calligraphers joined to this movement, like Mohammed Sa'i, uh, like Reza Mafi, or uh, some artists like uh, them. Uh, and uh, they try to uh, look uh, letters in other uh, forms. And uh, they uh, actually established a, a specific um, artwork, which is called uh, which is the mix of painting and calligraphy. Uh, it, uh, it has caused uh, many uh, new uh, uh, style of uh, writing in Iran that is completely different from manuscript or um, traditional calligraphy. Uh, Muhammad Ehsai, uh, I guess, uh, plays an important role in this uh, modern uh, perspective of uh, calligraphy. Uh, he was a teacher of, uh, um, uh, he was a, yes, he was a member of board of uh, graphic design uh, faculty in Tehran University, and uh, he, um, taught many uh, students like Damun Khanjanzadeh. Damun Khanjanzadeh uh, was a, a student of Muhammad Ehsai. I guess um, Damun's uh, typhus design um, style uh, introduced a new uh, style of um, looking, uh, um, looking at letters like um, his letters. Um, I'm not sure uh, you are. Uh, you know? Do you know uh, Damu? I'm not familiar now with the uh... uh, Damu uh, designed VJ or uh, many uh, uh, new style typefaces. VJ, Kara. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, I will his, check it out definitely uh, yes. Instagram accounts. And uh, Domont uh, taught many uh, students uh, in a, a graphic design institute, which is called Vige. And after that, I guess the new uh, style of designing typeface uh, started in Iran. Um, I guess this uh, specific style it goes back to uh, around 10 years ago. Mm, uh, in my opinion, it's uh, this uh, typhus design course in Vijay School is a turning point uh, for uh, typhus design. For typhus design. So be between a certain relationship between uh a modern art movement yes. and an actual initiative to develop an actual discourse and an actual institute and uh, yeah, some like uh, uh, space for teaching. Exactly. Yes. Uh, type design skills. Very interesting. And Abdul just shared the, uh, a link for uh, Don, Domun. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, uh, Sina was just saying, uh, Muhammad, I, I have seen an astalik being used in Egypt too. Can you explain the context of its use and its position? Uh, this is very interesting. I'm glad that Khalid is with us. And if he's comfortable with this, he can join us on it. Because he, he recently sh uh, shared on, on, on Twitter um, uh, a very old uh, sign uh, in an old hospital. Khaled, if, if you are comfortable, please join us on this and correct me. And um, I think it was from the uh, late 50s or, or, or so. 
And yes, nastalik is being used in, in Egypt, but it's a very it's a little bit of a different version of, of nastalik. Like the yes. the cascading is different. The mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a simplified version. Yes, and using using keshide constantly. Yes, yes, overuses keshide a little bit yes. and has has it's a little bit of a different taste. And I think till a very recent years, I think it would even be available till now a little bit in some streets. Some street names were written in, in that form of Nestalik. Okay. But it is different from, from version Nestalik. It's, uh, it's more simplified. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we, there is, I think there is a school of Egyptian Nestalik calligraphy. Uh, but, but this sign and other works, these are kind of special. They are called uh, or commercial works. So they have different constraints. Even uh, the rock has an us. They have different constraints, like smaller line heights, squished a bit. It may be a bit simplified, but they are usually, you see them in signs and maybe book covers. And yes. there are more artistic styles you see in, in, in more artworks. But uh, I, I'm far from being an expert in this. It's just uh, an observation I see in these kinds of signs. Yes, there's some similarities with um, uh, this um, Egyptian Nastaliq has, I guess, uh, has some similarities with Ordu Nastaliq. Yeah, I think uh, I think so. Yeah, uh, um, I, I more line I, height, maybe more. Yes, strong. I posted. Is, yes, yes, I posted a photo from uh, Frankfurt uh, Nastali. Yes, exactly. This is the yeah. Uh, this is the sign I saw on Khalid's uh, Twitter a couple of days ago. Yes, and I tweeted. I replied uh, this tweet to uh, with a photo. Uh, from a Pakistani uh, a store in Frankfurt. Yeah. I, th I think Abrahman have collected a lot more samples of, of these street signs and nostalgic. I, 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 there is also an, an Instagram account that collects these okay. signs, these kind of sports. I think he may be able to share it with us. And it's more flat. Yeah. Oh, yes, the, the, the flatness is very characteristic, and you see it in all styles deployed in this sign. The rock has flat, even the nas is also flat. They try to maintain a, a very to avoid having too many different heights and, and depths and keep a, con, a consistent yes. line height overall. Yeah, and I think this this feature in general became a little bit of a taste of the Egyptian. Uh, calligraphy uh, style, if, if you may say, like you, you see this in Rekha a lot and the versions of Rekha that, that was developed in Egypt, like more towards uh, flatter. Yes, I saw, uh, I saw this specific Nastalir in the, I guess, in the Egyptian builds, uh, paper builds. Uh, uh, for writing, no, I'm not sure about it. Maybe for writing the name of bank uh, you uh, used uh, souls, uh, yeah, or maybe for uh, writing some details for some uh, short text. I'm not sure about it. I just uh, imagined uh, some bills that I collected from Egyptian that I uh, maybe saw this specific nostalgia. I can't remember now to be certain about nostalgia. Sort of definitely, yeah. Uh, uh, on, on, on most of the bills, but uh, yeah, maybe I'm, I'm not like my memory cannot serve me on this now. Anyone else has, has questions to share with us? Um, man, this this have been very uh, very rich, and I'm I'm really happy. Um, and someone is writing something that me this sick if, if there's any question in it. Thank you so much, Amr, for the compliments. Me too. 
Oh, I just want to talk about family. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, Amir, you're uh, an inspiration to many, and uh, I'm just one of them. Um, thank you so much for the amazing work you do, and 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 thank you for being part of of this uh, a platform that is like developing with like we are co-developing it together, all of us. Um, thank you so much, and thank you for everyone who attended today. The the, the the discussion is recorded and will be published as well um and hopefully we will also open more conversations and have more speakers and more discussions to come so uh, follow us uh, soon thank you so much amir you're welcome thanks everyone uh thanks uh Mohammed for uh, inviting me to this great uh meeting uh thanks everyone for paying attention to this presentation and I'm glad to be a part of this project. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day, everyone. And you too. Bye. Bye.